Hey everybody, this is Matt. I just wanted to do a quick video on the t Ruby tap method if you haven't used it before. Uh, it's a pretty nice method. It saves you usually a line, sometimes more, of code. Um, and definitely keeps uh, your code a lot cleaner if you know how to use it. So without further ado, let's get to it. So as you can see, starting off, you know, I'm in Vim, Vim, by the way. It's a pretty good editor, been around a long time. If you're not used to it, you should definitely play around with it a bit. But we start off with this class called account. And we add these two attribute accessors called name and address. If you're not familiar with attribute accessors, what they are is, uh, b again, this is another boilerplate thing. They create uh, getters and setters for you. So now g name and address have getters and setters both. Um, okay, so going to our main method here, you see it's called create with default values, and the self dot means that it's a class method. So what we're going to do here is just create us a class, uh, an account with some default values for name and address. It doesn't really matter in this example what it really is, but uh, we just want to fill it with something. And this is like a common thing you would do, like, hey, if you're creating an, a, an account for a bank user, maybe you, you know, default their, uh, like, bank balance to zero or something like that. Okay, so first thing you do is you create a new account, you assign it to this variable account, then you say account.name, and remember, we can say that because there are the attribute accessors up here. So you say account.name equals none and account.address equals none. And then, of course, so, the, pre so the, the person who's calling this can have access to the account, you return the account. Okay, so now outside of this class, when you want to actually create it, you say account.create with default values. And here you have your account with these default values. As you can see, I'm doing uh, puts account.inspect and that's just going to show us what is actually in this object. So, let's let's run that ruby and ruby tap.rb. This is obviously not using tap yet. But as you can see, yeah, we've got name at @name equals none and at @address equals none. So, cool. That's that's exactly what we expected, right? So now let's take a look at the example with the Ruby tap method instead. Oops, thought I had it, but I didn't. Okay, so here's here's the difference, right? Going back between the two, these four lines have changed. So what we're doing here instead is, well, let me explain, I guess, what the tap method does. Basically, the tap method says, okay, you supply me a block, which is what we do right here, right? The do to end. And you do whatever you want inside this block. So as you can see, whoops, excuse me. Um, you you know, we, we assign, basically, basically we can do whatever we want in this block, but regardless of any of that, what it's going to return is this account.new. So that's that's what allows us to do the interesting things with Ruby tap. So what happens is here we have this A and that's the account. So basically account.new.tap passes in the account that you just created into A and now you have access to that variable and you can do whatever you want. Now normally in a Ruby method the last statement that's executed is the one that gets returned. However, uh, in this case, in this case, you might think, "Oh, okay, well, great, it's going to return a dot address," but that's not what you want. Obviously, you still want the account. Well, that's what this allows you to do by saying a account dot new dot tap. So that that's really the idea behind the tap method. Hopefully, I explained that well, but probably not. Let's have a look at the code output from the second file. As you can see, it's exactly the same because it's done the exact same stuff right so you might think well that's not really that big of a deal but as you start to use it more often it's it's kind of more obvious how it's beneficial so like if we go and say let's just say we want to only set the name right we just want to set the name so doing this I'm gonna go back to here doing this the old way here you go three lines right that's that's fine I mean there's nothing wrong with that um, so no problem but going back to the other code here's what the here's what the account dot 
new dot tap or tap is on everything so it has nothing to do with account dot new but uh, excuse me what you can do is actually shove all this stuff now on one line instead of three so you say a dot name that's it get rid of that guy and that's it that's all you have to do oh. Vim likes to get carried away sometimes and delete your lines when you don't want it to. But just from that, you can go from three lines to one line. Now, spread over the course of a project, uh, that can really add up. So just keep in mind, uh, hopefully it kind of at least got the concept across of what it is. Play with it for sure. Um, but it's it's a I notice just in my job on a daily basis it's a big time savings uh, or at least code savings as well really but like another example of where you might do this um, n not so much you know um, that you would even really do this all the time but sometimes you'll have uh, a validation or something like validate some value and you know like in Rails for example it'll fail if you return false, right? So I've seen some people who end up doing something like this. They'll return true because they're, they're not even necessarily doing, like it's a callback, but they'll use it for like caching. That's what I should really say, right? Sorry, I'm kind of all over the place here. So like you want to cache some value, but you don't really want to, you don't want to ever return anything but true. You just want to cache it and then move on. So what you what you can end up saying is cat or true dot tap and then you know a dot name equals you know some value. But this would actually probably be like you know cache name. Whoops. So you can say, like, because in this case, true is an object, just like everything else in Ruby. And so you're able to say true.tap. And then regardless of what you do in here, you could do pretty much anything other than raise an exception, and it's going to return true. So those are some examples. And I know this video is a little bit rough, but hopefully you kind of get the idea of the purpose. All right. Take care.